and welcome to Ask a Paleontologist. I'm Dr. Scott Persons, and today is our second question from the Shelf Life Bookstore in Calgary. And the question is, will it ever be theoretically possible to clone small dinosaurs to keep as pets? Unfortunately, probably not. I don't think it will happen, at least not in our lifetimes. The problem with cloning a dinosaur, well, there are a number of problems, but the biggest problem is where do you get the genetic material to begin with? Now, recently, some molecular paleontologists do think they successfully identified small chunks of dinosaur DNA preserved inside of fossil bones. But a dinosaur's genome, just like the genome of all animals, was incredibly complex. And trying to piece together a complete dinosaur genetic code from just these small fragments that have been discovered is a bit like trying to piece together a very well-shredded phone book. There's often no way to know if you've got the code exactly right. Now, an alternative might be to attempt to genetically reverse engineer a dinosaur using the genome of a modern bird. Birds, of course, are the descendants of dinosaurs, and as such, birds carry within their own genome some of the sequences that were present in a dinosaur, but which have since become switched off. Theoretically, with the right amount of genetic tinkering, you might be able to go into a bird's DNA, switch back on the ancestral dinosaur codes, and cause a bird to develop that's got a lot of dinosaurian traits. For instance, things like teeth in the jaws, claws on the hands, and a long muscular tail. But that's no simple trick either. The hardest part about that is figuring out exactly what sequences are the ancestral dinosaur codes. And then it's a matter of getting them to switch on and develop in the right way. Besides which, the result wouldn't exactly be a true prehistoric dinosaur. But let's not let that stop us. Let's go ahead and answer the second sci-fi part of that question. Could you keep a dinosaur as a pet? Now, of course, all dinosaurs were wild animals, and most wild animals do not make for very good pets. But dinosaurs were around for over 160 million years. They lived across all continents, and they evolved into a great variety of forms. And in all that time and evolution, probably a few species evolved that might have made for pretty good pets. So how about it? Let's say you go down to the prehistoric pound and you want to adopt. What dinosaur should you bring home with you? Well, what traits make for a good pet in modern day animals? Well, obviously you'd like to adopt a dinosaur that's not going to eat you or gore you or squish you in one step. And perhaps most importantly of all, you'd like a dinosaur with a fairly social personality. Now today, animals that are able to form a social bond with a human master tend to be ones that have evolved to live in social groups where there was a natural social hierarchy. So we need ourselves a fairly small, non-lethal social dinosaur. Hmm. Well, among the most social of all dinosaurs, we think, were the Ceratopsians, or the horned dinosaurs. We know these dinosaurs form social groups because we find them often buried together in huge herds that number into the hundreds and even into the thousands. As I said, we can't pick a very big Ceratopsian, but there were lots of smaller ones. For instance, what about the Mongolian Ceratopsian Protoceratops? Protoceratops is a fairly small horned dinosaur, although I use the term horn loosely, it only has, in some cases, a very small bump right on the tip of its snout. Anyway, it's not a dinosaur that's going to gore you. You do need to be careful of its great big parrot-like beak, but overall, maybe a protoceratops, kind of like a modern capybara, could have adjusted to a life with human beings. Okay, another obvious choice might be an ornithomimid. Ornithomimids were the ostrich mimic dinosaurs, and based on their similarities to modern ratites, flightless birds that include ostriches, emus, and cassowaries, 
maybe Ornithomimus had a similar ecology. Now, not all ratites make for anywhere near good pets. The cassowary is famous for delivering deadly kicks. It's not an animal you want to be walking on a leash. On the other hand, emus are relatively docile birds. That's why they're often kept as farmyard animals and are often included in Australian petting zoos. There's a great diversity of ornithomimids. Some of them probably had temperaments like a cassowary, steer clear. Others may well have had temperaments like an emu. And again, we know from bone beds that many ornithomimids did live together in large groups. Now, you need to be careful of the feet of an ornithomimid, just like in the case of the cassowary. You should also probably be a little bit mindful of their hands. Ornithomimids have got three long fingers that ended in pretty scary claws. Maybe the safest option would be to adopt a small ornithopod. Now, the ornithopoda, that's the group that includes some giants like the hadrosaurs or duckbills, but it also includes lots of smaller animals like this guy here. This is Parxosaurus. I like the pick of an ornithopod for a pet because, as I say, many of them are relatively small. We know at least some of them were social. They don't have any scary horns or spikes or claws, and I think they rank as among the cutest of all dinosaurs. I say that because if you take a look at the size of the orbit, the hole in the skull that housed the eyeball, it's really, really big. And having big eyes, just like a big Japanese cartoon character, would have made ornithopods gosh darn cute pets to have around. But my number one pick for a dinosaur adoption would actually be a sauropod. Now, you'll remember, of course, sauropods are huge, long-necked dinosaurs, but not all of them. I would pick Bellosaurus. Bellosaurus is a kind of European sauropod that evolved to live on island chains, and it may display what we call island dwarfism. That is, the tendency for island species to shrink in size. Being on an island, your resources are fairly limited. There's just not enough food to go around, and so by being smaller, you increase your survivability by just needing to eat less. Like many sauropods, Bellosaurus may have been a very social animal. It doesn't have any horns or scary-looking claws, and I really like it because it's a dinosaur that, at about the size of a pony, you could take for a ride. All right, I hope that answers your question. Now, if any of you have got a question for me out there, leave me a comment below. Who's a good pet dinosaur? Who's a good pet dinosaur?